Welcome to Super Sound Showcase, sponsored by Culture Fix here on FM 93.5 The Berg and WMBG AM 740. We are Williamsburg's radio station. I'm your host for the show, Robert Hodge, and today we have Adam Schaefer and Gavin Wallace joining forces for the first time. Uh, Adam has a band called Gourmet Jam, and these two gentlemen have just recently become collaborators, and I am looking forward to sharing their, their multiple talents with you. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, hey, how are you? Going? Thanks for having us, Roman. Doing very well. It's my pleasure. Um, Gavin, this is kind of funny because you and I have a long history with each other, That's right. even though we haven't seen each other in a long time. That's right. Your mom was a very close friend of mine and still is, but uh, yep. you know, I, I knew all about young Gavin who wanted to perform and sing, <laughs> but I never saw you perform. No, never. I think back when you knew me, I was doing stage stuff. Yeah, I think I was doing center musicals stage and things. And, and it's so funny to me that all of a sudden, the small world that we live in has yielded an opportunity not only for me to see you perform for the first time, but for you to actually be doing it on my radio show, which is crazy. Absolutely, and it's a, an honor. And just thank you, thank you again to you know you for having us and Adam for bringing me along and you know letting mm -hmm. me sing over his beautiful songs that he has. Right. All right. So that that leads me to the next narrative, which is that I had originally contacted Adam to book his band Gourmet Jam on Super Sound Showcase, and there have been all kinds of last minute changes that happened, and and uh, a lead singer who departed and things going on that uh, next thing I knew we we just have been improvising on what we were going to give to the super sound audience and I'll tell you what this is uh, sometimes I think this kind of unexpected collaboration can be very electric on the radio and I'm, I'm happy uh, to have both of you here bringing what you bring respectively to the table Adam what do you think uh, has been driving your music for all the years that you've been playing out Hmm, well, I've only re recently, uh, a year and a half, been back on the scene. I was a musician in my early teens, all through teens, and mm -hmm. uh, right after high school, I kind of gave it okay. up. Okay. And uh, it was the last summer a friend of mine called on me and needed a bass player. He wanted to know if I'd sit in with him. Uh -huh. So I, I had sold all my gear. It was down to just two acoustic guitars or whatever. And I had a uh, few nights to learn 40 songs to come sit in oh and play goodness. a set with my friend. And uh, I pulled it off like 90% of the way. and. And I was hooked. I was like, this is fun. Why did I ever give up on this? Why am I not doing this still? Mm -hmm. And uh, around the same time, I rekindled a friendship from high school um, who actually took interest in my style and some of my originals. And uh, he kind of mentored me and took me along and showed me the ropes and took faith in me and gave mm -hmm. me the momentum I needed to get out here and start doing it. Well, without wanting to be uh, prying, what would make you stop music? Why would you set it down? Oh, I was married uh, at an early age and just different things in life. Different, maybe a passion moved away and then didn't really right. stick. Marriage yeah. changes people sometimes, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it sure does. You know what's interesting? I saw a bumper sticker actually about two weeks ago on a, a big red truck. And I thought it was interesting because it said the driver of this truck carries no cash. He's married. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ha, ha. that's I great. I thought that was funny. That's great. <laughs> I was married, divorced, early divorced, and yeah, uh, um, I got a sweet girlfriend now. Mary Mullins uh, is my of girlfriend. the Mullin sisters. Yep, of mm -hmm. the Mullin sisters. Great singers indeed. And she's been a great uh, uh, role model and, and encouragement. Like, you know, one, you know, everybody's their worst critic, and I get down on myself sometimes. And she's like, "No, that sounds great. That sounds right. great." And I'm like, "All right, well, I believe you. I'll try again." And have there been songs uh, written about your relationship with her? Uh, I tend not to write about love and stuff like that. I like to be pretty vague with my writing. Okay. Huh. Yeah. I, uh, I like when you sometimes get a, a stylish audience and you can tell right away that they're perhaps vogue on the outside and a little vague on the inside. It's cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's all, always nice. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about what we're going to hear today when you perform. Um, you basically have had very little time as, as collaborators. Yes. Um, but, but how did this begin? Uh, we were looking for a lead singer, put an ad on Facebook, and he was the, one of the ones who uh, sent in a, an application, yep. and I invited about a half a dozen applicants that were interested in working with us to come to a gig and have a meet and greet and potentially sit in and sing a song, and him mm -hmm. and another fellow showed up, and uh, I hit it off with him right off the bat. He was, he was there early, beat me to my own gig, mm -hmm. and helped <laughs> nice. me unload my gear. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, this guy's getting extra credit points. Well. And then he had a big, warm smile, and he was a people person. And uh, and we brought him up on stage, and like, he, uh, my jaw dropped when he just started singing. It, right. and it felt natural. It was fun. That's one of the biggest things. Playing yeah. music with somebody, I like it to feel natural. You've kind of spun yeah. an image in my head, I have to ask. Was there an actual application? 
Oh yeah, yeah. He's sending his much. he's sending his resume. I got about much, uh, yeah. twelve resumes. I don't he think said, about you know, kind of giving sent, you a written application. Well, no, it was more it was more along the lines of you know he said, hey, we're looking for a lead singer, and I was right. like, hey, I I could be interested. You know, I'd like to see you guys come and play. And he was like, well, right. send me your Facebook, send me some stuff, and you know we'll get it figured out. And then he was like, hey, mm-hmm. so this is the deal. We're gonna come out. You know, we're having a gig. You know, come out if you can. Definitely love to have you out. We're going to have other another guy out there and possibly some other people as well, mm-hmm. you know, auditioning essentially live for the, you know, for the position. And um, ended up being a great time. And I got to jam, okay. you know, do some songs with him. And some other really, really talented people came out. And it was just a great time. And how fortunate that uh, we had already set up a time for yeah. Super Sound Showcase. Everything happens for a reason. We got delayed again. And then... Uh, yeah, I, we hung out all weekend after the gig. I invited him to help me at a charity benefit I was uh, donating my time to, and he came and sang all day and and uh, helped me load my gear at the charity gig, too. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, got to help out, man. And then when he, when he came over to my house Sunday to jam, he brought his own microphone. I said, all right, I like this guy. He's actually got a singer that's got his own microphone. That's good. Yeah. And, and I sing. I do a solo acoustic uh, show. Um, I do a duet duo with uh, my drummer where he plays hand percussions. Mm-hmm. And the bass player and Gourmet Jam and me, we all often switch up. We'll take turns playing guitar and bass right. back and forth. And uh, we, in the meantime, we're doing a three three piece band and we take turns singing. But we like to do songs that are more. You can't really sing and play at the same time. At least right. I can't anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, so we, we really want a front man, a, a dominant vocalist, and we want to be able to just focus on playing the music right. flawlessly and beautifully. Well, that's great. So great hopefully uh, he's going to be the guy. Tell me about the evolution of the name Gourmet Jam, because I like that. That's one of the things that drew me to, to pay attention to. I, it, I thought about it for... Well, when the first the first lineup of this band got together, it was four guys. Me and the drummer are the founders, and uh, the, the other two positions have changed, but... We were doing a lot of improv jams that we were wowing our friends and stuff with and just leaving them jaw dropped. And they were like, how long did it take you to write that? And, and we're like, we just came up with that. And right. And uh, so it was. they were kind of calling us a jam band, and I didn't want to be labeled as a jam band. And right. we did one that really, I, I had goosebumps on myself. And I was like, when you're giving yourself goosebumps, that's when you know you're doing it good. Right. And uh, we just finished the jam, and I hit the stop button, and I was like, that that was that was just a gourmet jam, and it, <laughs> nice. and it rang. We all laughed, and mm-hmm. I started calling the band that, and it stuck. Mm-hmm. What is the biggest problem that musicians have with keeping a band together? Mm, no, it was. Is it changing priorities, or is it? Uh, life changes, marriages, well, and yeah, what, it is. What happens? It, my, the perfect candidate would have a job uh, for like a, preferably a family business where he's got a little flexibility right. in his hours, uh, yeah. no kids, no wife, and you know can take the last minute gig and show up on two hours notice. But sure. it's it's hard to find that, and you know and some of the yeah. best musicians are also the best family men. Uh, that's why Dustin left the band with conflict of interest. He's coaches uh, little league football in Gloucester. His mm-hmm. son's on the team, and it was just too much for him. So I, but I admire that. You know, he's a great family man. So it's yeah. it's hard to separate. I think that draws yeah. time away from it. Yeah, you know, and you Gavin, get those responsibilities. How, how much time have you spent like in front of a band? Have, have you done this before? In front of a band, I have altogether, as far as notable gigs, I can say five or six, maybe. Okay. Um, and I've been playing out pretty aggressively for probably the past six to eight months. I say really okay. aggressively. But I was definitely playing, practicing, writing, mm-hmm. um, probably for the past two years, uh-huh. I'd say. But tell me about the transition from when I knew you in your much yeah. younger days and you were doing a lot of theater and stuff. Wh- where does the rock and the blues and all this, where, where is this coming from? So How did that transition? I think it was kind of always there, mm-hmm. but for a 13, 14-year-old who wants to get into music, who's... right family may not be necessarily big into them singing harder rock, blues, funk. You know, there I just seemed like maybe there weren't as many outlets when I was yeah. that age. And so it kind of died off for a little while. And, right. you know, you get to working and living. Mm-hmm. And um, eventually I just had a, a good buddy of mine. One day he was like, hey, man, you want to play some music? And I was like, sweet. You know, mm-hmm. hadn't done it in a long time. And he just started playing this bluesy riff on the piano. And I was like, oh, my lord yeah we we are doing this i'm i'm excited about this again and it just drew me right back into like roots blues and bluegrass Mm -hmm. and you know old school funk and soul and r&b and and now i'm 
just head over heels with it, and I love it, mm -hmm. and that's what's really got my yeah. time. Now, when you talk about members of your family not being so enthusiastic, I know that does not include your mother. No, 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 because no, no, no. your mother. <laughs> no, she big, is all big for it. Big shout out to Janine because I tell big you what, time. I have known since I've known her, and since yeah. I've known you. I know that she is one of those Princess Diana mothers that would support anything and you're everything, right. who would make sure that you have yeah. everything you need to do, everything you want to do. Oh, you're absolutely and right. And I love that about her. She is one heck of a mother. Yeah, absolutely. And she was out at the gig on Friday, you mm -hmm. know, just, I told her, I was like, hey, you know, I'm going to go to this gig and, you know, probably sing a yeah. song or two. I don't know what's really going on, you know. And uh, she was like, well, I'm coming out and brought well, all of her friends. And, yeah. and it, it excites me because I know her well enough to know her enthusiasm for you finally finding a dream that you love. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I know that she's happy and I'm happy. And, you know, just that's, great. that's the goal is to just keep doing stuff that mm -hmm. makes me happy. And if other people like it along the way. Well, then... and as long as we're talking about small worlds and we're talking about uh, uh, coincidences, do you even know that at one point I was your mother's voice coach? I don't. I, I did not know that coaching. until right now. Your mom can sing. Oh, yeah, I know she can sing. And I might have to let her sit in with us. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> oh, let me she would love to. She would eat it up. Let me tell you one thing. There was a, a huge party, a business party, uh, for a company in Newport News one time, and we oh, were both I know invited. Which one, I think. And I will tell you, Janine is the life of the party when she's ready to be, and she stepped up on stage with a band she had never met, wow. and she took off. And everybody at that party was just flabbergasted. And the funny part of it was, it wasn't enough that she just had the moxie and the talent to get up there and front the band, but she was wearing a, a, a light blue evening gown that had a train, actually. I mean, you don't see that very often. And she looked like a living, breathing Barbie doll on the stage. And people were like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, so oh, I can imagine. I'm telling you, you're onto something with this dude because yeah. the genes in his family are already established <laughs> yeah. as entertainment legends. Oh, so. my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, you're not well, wrong. As, as you're a musician, I, I was patting myself about a set, two songs in uh -huh. our set. The dance floor was packed. I said, the band sounded good tonight. And then I found out that it was his mom and basically entourage of the band. And I was like, okay, well, at least, they, at least they were on the dance floor with us. Right, right. <laughs> Having fun. Oh, it was well, a great time. Well, I will tell you, you are going to be in for a treat today when you hear these gentlemen perform for the first time on uh, radio together. And I am delighted to present them on Super Sound Showcase. Uh, so we are going to go for a commercial break, and we will be right back with the music of the new incarnation of sort of Gourmet Jam. We're trying to figure out what, what they're going to do in the future. But uh, for now, we have Adam Schaefer and Gavin Wallace, and they'll be performing in just a few moments. We'll be right back. So what's the first song, guys? It's going to be a song called Heck of a Guy. Awesome. All right, let's do it. All right, thank you. Hey, well, they say I'm a heck of a guy. Thank you. 
nice. Adam, was that a song you, you composed? I've been playing that for probably 12 years. I've been playing that for probably 12 years. Mm hmm Yeah. And it's 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 changed shape a couple times every time I collaborate with somebody, but I kept going back to that structure of the song. Okay. Well, cool. Um, are you a heck of a guy? <laughs> Is there any truth well, in that delivery? I don't, I don't. I don't know that I'm a heck of a guy. You know, maybe I've been told you're unbelievable. So far, a couple times. so far, I think he's a heck of a guy. He showed up at the gig to for a meet and greet and was outside offering to help yeah. load in uh, equipment. I, I know said, that's pretty funny. Right well, bat. you know, man, it, my my dad always told me something that stuck with me forever is if you're ten minutes early, you're on time, and if you're on time, you're late. Right. And even as a musician, being rock star, you know, whatever the kind of life I'm trying to lead for myself i want to make sure that i'm punctual and respectful to the people i'm working with they have to be otherwise you're labeled unprofessional yeah, and, and love, you might as well not bother adam and he's really got some extremely inventive mm -hmm. sounds that i'm okay. having a lot of fun working with him doing okay so, well what's the next tune what do you got i think the next tune is going to be a tune called burning okay let's have it thank you
I like that. That's pretty soulful. How long did it take you really to learn that song? Because you seem like you, you've made it your own. That song, um, to be 100% honest with you, we learned it over the weekend and just kind of mm -hmm. played it. I'll say really nailed it's it It's come together very quickly. Yesterday for the most part. That's my newest but, piece. I've been working on that one for the past month. And I've been working on that one for the past month. And it was the first one I played for him because it's yeah. my newest piece. It's freshest in my mind. And uh -huh. uh, he's like, play that one again. And after yeah. the fourth time I played through the rotation, he had a whole page full of stuff scribbled down. And hmm. just, a, it just made me think so much. It was just so... So then I asked him, I said, who are you in love with? <laughs> like, who's that song about? <laughs> and he said, man... And what was your answer? It, but wow. What was you your know, answer? Um, it's... It, that there is definitely some some love there and some feelings and a lot of things that I need to get out and be able to mm -hmm. express um, with relationships, with friendships, and, you know, with everybody. And for me, it's just like my heart is burning. My heart's burning for all these people and, you know, for the people that I'm meeting, the new friendships I'll have and the ones mm -hmm. I have now. So right. I don't know. It's just something that, that that melody is just so beautiful. It's just something that really every time I hear it, it's just shut my eyes heart gets heavy I like, let's do it I, I like it. to think of it as being written towards the lover you haven't met yet the <laughs> image of the ideal lover right. everybody sure. has in their head you're right and I think a Absolutely. lot of that is you're right you know, but you've already so. met yours haven't you yes yes sir I thought so <laughs> yeah I brought her here with me I play my best guitar when she's looking at me yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice nice and uh, I'm interested Gavin in, in what your music background okay. brings to the project that, that brings you into Adam's writing. What, where, where is the similarity and what's different about it? You know, I think for both of us, what we go for is something that is not going to be easily defined by mm -hmm. someone. You know, we don't, I think neither one of us wants to have a label necessarily as, you know, hey, this guy is a rock guy. Hey, this guy is a right. blues player. Mm -hmm. You know, which all of those are fine. They're, they're wonderful. You mm -hmm. know, and, um, I think it just gives you a lot more flexibility as an artist. And okay. I think that we kind of see that in each other. Yeah. And, you know, that's what really... Oh, that's great. That'll inspire you together. well. So we only have time for one more song. What is it? Uh, this is going to be a bluesy tune. It's a little 12-bar blues. We don't, really have a, we don't really have a name for it just yet. But uh, this is something we've been working on over the weekend. And okay. So untitled for the best part. <laughs> All right. Thank you Doesn't so get much. any fresher than that. No, it doesn't. The freshest gourmet jam you can get.
like that. That's very Thank kitschy. Thank you very much. Very <laughs> kitschy. And uh, truly, that's just something you've kind of improvised over the weekend? It is. Wow. I, I didn't want it to really take shape. I just wanted it to be one of those generic blues uh -huh. songs that you could apply to a good day, a bad day, uh, right. uh, you know. I like so, that. And uh, I'm wondering now, will it will it morph further or will it stay the same? Because I like it the way it was. That progression's even older than the other ones. I've been playing that one since I was 14 years old. And it's mm -hmm. not I mean, it's not original. It's a standard blues progression. Well, of course. I mean, but I mean, as far as the lyric and all. Little, yeah. Little, you know, I think as far as the lyric. Um, I liked it. And you know, it was the happiest you've been today. Thank you. And you know mm -hmm. what? I'll you tell like you, it. that was, uh, it's probably my favorite to do. Because I'm. Mm -hmm big blues fan myself right so that's yeah so when i met gavin on friday night he said when do you want to hang out next and i said well actually i'm uh, uh donating my time at a benefit on sunday mm -hmm. uh, and uh, i said we're playing some music it's uh kind of an open jam session if you want to come and sing and it was me and some members from two other bands none of the full bands were available so we like three bands chipped okay. in so right, i'll bring the drums you play bass and and he came in and sang most of the the thing and donated his own time to the cause and it was I was kind of uh, nice. taken back at how how helpful he was there and everybody kind of he won all my friends over off the bat as soon as he met. Well, awesome. <laughs> well, we thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. This has been great. It's yeah, nice to so hear a new happens. sound. Always good to hear new music. And for those of you who tune in every week, thank you so much. And thank you to our sponsors over at Culture Fix. So to Steve and to Jen and to Shirley, I am grateful for your sponsorship as well. And stay tuned for more Super Sound Showcase. We're here every Thursday at 3.15. Thanks for being here. Now we go back to our regular programming.